So electronics start with the Arduino. The CNC shield I'm using is for an Arduino Uno or Uno R3. So that's what I'll be talking about. I'll be using the version 3 CNC shield for Arduino Uno and plugging in A4988 stepper drivers. If you do not have any of the prior electronics, it will probably be cheapest and easiest to buy a kit with all the electronics inside. Uh, they're super easy to find. Once you have them, the shield plugs into the Arduino like so. Then you have to bridge some pins. If you have jumpers, use those, but if not, just make a solder bridge on the back side or use jumper wires. Look for the set of four pins on the left side of the board, then find the one labeled Y. It'll be uh, under one labeled X and above one labeled Z. Bridge off both of the pins to the right of that. This links the motions of the Y motor and the A motor, which you'll plug in soon. Next, look at the bottom of each row of yellow pins, and you will see a set of three pins. Connect the top and bottom pin of all three, and then repeat that on all sides, so these three pin sets, for all of the three pin sets. So now your board should look like this, with jumpers here, 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 and here. Now that the jumpers are connected, add the stepper motor drivers, insert in the, they insert into the set of yellow pins like so. After that, it's time to wire the power. Use some wires to connect the positive and negative terminals on the shield to a standard 12 volt jack. Power supply should plug into the wall, be 12 volts, and about 2.5 to 3.5 amps. I had an old uh, transformer from some random electronic thing, so I just cut off the jack and wired on the correct one. Please be careful while doing this. Anything with large amounts of current running through it and or plugging into an outlet is inherently dangerous. The last step is to plug in the stepper motors. Plug one from the Y axis into the Y and the other one from the Y axis into the A axis. That's why we linked the two earlier. Plug the X axis into the X and the Z axis into the Z. If you find a motor spinning the wrong way, just pull it out, rotate the end 180 degrees and plug it in, plug it back in, which reverses its polarity. And that's all for electronics. They're pretty simple. If you want, you can wire a relay into the Dremel circuit and turn that and turn the Dremel on and off electronically, although that's not necessary. So the first thing you're going to want to do is install GRBL into the Arduino. As I said earlier, GRBL is an open source Arduino library for taking in G-code and controlling stepper motors with that. It's called a milling controller. I had a lot of trouble with this part, so I'll try and be as specific as possible. The first thing you want to do is go to GRBL's GitHub website, find the newest version, and hit download as a zip file, then open it with whatever applications you use to view zip files. For me, it's WinRAR. If you don't have anything for that, then just save the file where you can easily find it. The next step is to extract the file. Right-click grblmaster.zip, then hit Extract All Files. Now you can open up Arduino IDE, which you can download at the Arduino website. Go to the file, include library, and add .zip library. Then it should pull up whatever files application you use. Go to search and put in all lowercase grbl, and then hit enter. What this does is it selects a subfolder inside of grblmaster.zip that has all the stuff that you want. Now that you have the library installed, but you still need to include in the sketch, go to Files, Example, then select the one titled GRBL. And lastly, choose GRBL Upload. If everything went correctly, then you should see a whole bunch of great text, which are notes in one line saying, hashtag include uh, GRBL. Just upload that to the Arduino via USB and you're done. One thing I do wanna note, is all the messages are going to look different on my screen right now. That's because I've already uploaded it onto my computer once. That's why I came up with messages saying, would you like to replace this file with other ones? Just follow the instructions though, they do work. If you have trouble, comment down below and I'll try and answer it. The next piece of software we have to download is the interface for the milling controller. Although there are many controllers out there, I would recommend using cnc.js. It's a free software that works really well and has a lot, ton of options. Uh, well, it's still being easy to use. Go to the website and install that and then open CNC.js. Here we can see the machine move for the first time. Plug the 12 volt cord into the wall and the USB cable into the Arduino and laptop. Then choose the correct COM port. If you don't know, look in your device manager. Then make sure the baud rate on it is set to 11250 and then hit open. Now a bunch of white text should emerge up over the black part of the screen. 
And for now, the important lines are 100 equals 100, 1 equals, and dollar sign 100, 2 equals. These values are steps divided by millimeters for each axis. If you're using standard NEMA 17 step motors and T8 by 8 lead screws, then the value you should set for each is 400. If you're using a lead screw with a different pitch, for example, T8 times 2 lead screw, you just multiply the steps by the dividend of the different pitches. Uh, this gets clearer with an example. For a T8 by 2 lead screw, with one fourth the pitch, uh, you can tell by the last number, you would multiply by four, making the value you want 1,600 steps per millimeter. If you don't do this, the part will come out incorrectly sized. Now you can tap plus or minus on the desired axis and hopefully it will work. It didn't even work for me the first time, but with enough troubleshooting, hopefully you can figure it out. But you don't wanna to have to mill by clicking buttons, so we need some G code. I would recommend trying your first part with an SVG file, the type I'll be using, or a DXF file, because they're easier to convert than solid model files. A way I found to get an SVG files for free is by using Inkscape uh, to draw parts, then changing settings for object to path and saving. For more information on this, check out the video link in the description. Then I use this fantastic program called JSCut. This is a browser cam program, so you don't even need to install anything. Super easy to use and self-explanatory. Just put in the files, set the depth and the true diameter and all that, then convert to G-code. Back in JSCut, hit the upload G-code button and a toolpath will appear in the 3D viewer. This is a visual representation of the G-code. Now just run the program and watch your machine move. I would recommend a dry run first or creating a marker mount like this to test out the wood. Now before I cut wood, I became unsure of its structural integrity, mostly because I don't have linear bearings added. So instead of redesigning the entire thing before testing it, I added second brass nuts to each part of the y-axis. I would recommend adding another one on the, both the x and y-axis, and maybe z to make it more sturdy. I haven't cut wood without it, so you could opt not to, I just don't know what'll happen. Anyway, I replaced the marker with an engraving bit for the Dremel and tried cutting wood. I was so happy with these results, as everything seemed to be precise and strong during and after I milled it. To test for precision, I ran the code once again, once it was done, just setting it to cut deeper and re -engraved, and it re-engraved perfectly. I won't be cutting anything from CAD in this video, but I thought I would include something about that. I found a CAM program called Estelcam that seemed very well made, had a ton of options, it was fairly easy to use. So I would definitely recommend that. Otherwise, if your CAD program has CAM functions built into it, then that is totally what you want to go with. Fusion 360 is a great option, um, so SolidWorks if you have access to that. Once again, before this video is over, thanks so much to Nikodem Barnick. How affordable yet professional created his CNC machine to be is absolutely incredible, and this machine would have never been possible to nearly the standard without his videos and instructable, instructable without, which I will link in the description. This machine was meant to be a cheaper version of him, his. Anyway, hope you enjoyed and see you next time. Homies, amigos, pizza, Nintendo, woo woo!